Hey everyone, my name is Natasha Baptiste. I'm the owner of Phoenixology and I am making some candles today and I decided before I did my last batch I could go ahead and give you guys a little bit tea on how to make candles and just um, saving some of your time of the research that I had to do to get started. Do you definitely see regular videos on YouTube, on, all over on the internet? Um, everyone has different rules on how they make their candles. I'm just going to go over the basics and help you skip the research and give you the basics of what I've learned. So the number one thing is you definitely need equipment. You can make your candles starting out with small containers, especially if you're testing it. But if you want to scale it, um, you definitely will need to purchase and invest in more equipment. These jars right here, I got these from Jar Store. Candle Science also sells them. These are my 12.5 ounce glass and these are my 22 ounce that I use and I use different size of wicks. So definitely the wick size matter as well as the wax that you're using. In the summertime, you have to be careful with the temperature, the melt point of your wax. If you're shipping in the summertime, you're going to have to consider that if you have a wax with a low melt point, then by the time it gets to the customers, some of the fragrance oil might melt off. So I switch out my wax. I use a harder one during the summer. I try to harden it up some, and then in the winter time, I can go ahead and use my regular ones. I purchased my wax from 1616, 16, no, 1617, Candle Science sometimes, um, Hearts and Crafts, and there's one more. I added in the link. I can't remember. And I create my own mix with the different wax that I use to, create, um, to help with my candles, with the fragrance, and to help it burn longer and burn a little stronger. So... To get started, I already melted the wax for you guys. The general rule to start out to determine how well and how strong your candle burns is you wanna start out with at least one pound of wax to one ounce of fragrance oil. So this is the fragrance oil that I use for our aphrodisiac, aphrodisiac water. <laughs> Oh, I'm struggling, you guys, today. It's been a long day. But this is the fragrance oil that I use from Candle Science for my aphrodisiac candles. That is a popular item in our store. And I pretty much have played with it and determined the amount of fragrance oil that I need to go with my wax. So one thing about making candles, testing is very important. No fragrance, no two fragrances are going to burn the same. So every time you create a fragrance, you need to go ahead and test it out. The longer your candles sit, the stronger the, pay, the fragrance will um, bind with the wax. And when it burns, then the fragrance will last longer. So I'm using soy. I'm all soy based. Um, based on my research, soy is better than paraffin and paraffin and the other, the other types of wax like that because it burns cleaner. It's all naturally sourced. Um, these are cruelty free, um, the places that I purchased from. So soy, you have to play with it a little bit more than the regular paraffin wax. Um, you have to work harder at getting the correct color that you want and the type of fragrance that you want. And some fragrances as well as color don't play well with soy wax. So definitely a lot of testing, a lot of wasted wax, <laughs> to be honest, before I started um, getting to the point where I was comfortable enough to get it right. In the meantime, a lot of friends and family got to test my candles out and they had to give me their honest opinions of what they thought with how I was making it. So right now I have the wax melting. And I have a, a wax melt pot. Um, I have two. I have, let me show you right here. I'm going to move a, a little bit away so you can see this. I actually got this off of Etsy. This is my wax pot for my wax melts. And I have a bigger one that I actually use for my candles. And I got that off of Etsy as well. Sorry about the noise. And to be honest, when you're going to do this, 
you can't wear your good clothes. So I'm serving all hips today because these are my home clothes. These are my, I don't care if they get ruined and I can't, you know, wear them out clothes. And that's what I use when I'm creating products for my store. I am melting my wax. General rule, you melt it to at least 185 degrees. And that way it allows the wax and the fragrance to bind as well as the colors if you're using colors. When you're picking your wicks, you have to keep in mind how much fragrance oil are you using? What type of um, wax are you using? Um, the other thing you wanna consider is how much color are you using? All those things affect how a candle burns. So I can't tell you use this size wick for this size jar because it all depends on how much you're making. So you wanna start maybe at least 8% in fragrance oil to your wax, um, the load. Some wax can take up to 12%. So it's up to you how strong you want it to burn and how much you're making. I make big batches because of the amount that I sell, but when starting out, you wanna start out with a small batch so you're not wasting as much. So for my 12 point five ounce jars. I found that depending on what wax I'm using and how much my mixture is when I blend my wax, I use the Echo 14, sometimes the Echo 16, and then sometimes I will do the CD12 or CD14 wax. Depending on what wax I'm using will determine the type of wicks I'm using because some wax burn better with CD wicks and others burn better with the Echo wicks. You look for the diameter and circumference basically of your container to help determine where you want to start with your wick. And another video, I'll probably give you a little bit more detail and you could ask any questions in the comments. And if I know the answer, I will let you know. If not, you know, I'm, I'm okay with researching. So basically making candles is nothing but research, 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 research. It doesn't matter if you've been in the business for five years, you still have to research and test when you, in, you introduce a new fragrance to your store or to your candle line. So I've melted the wax at it's about i have a thermometer here that i'm going to test and i didn't want to you know have my camera all over the place so i'm going to come out of frame a little bit but i'm using this laser th thermometer that i bought on amazon and that basically gives the temperature of w what i can test to see where the wax is i have my pouring pouring can or pouring tin however you want to call it from hearts and crafts and I basically, what I did is I have some previous um, wax in there, a little bit from leftover from my last batch. And I decided I don't wanna waste it. So I put it in here and I'm going to zero out my scale. I'm going to put it on the scale right here and I'm going to turn my scale on and I'm going to zero it out because your measurement is going to be minus the weight of the container you're using, the weight of anything that you have in there as well. Once my scale is zeroed out, now it will be okay to add my wax. So some start out, especially in small batches, Ooh, I'm tearing my gloves, um, especially in small batches, it's easier to weigh it, the wax, before it melts. Now, when you're doing large boxes, you learn to do the, you know, to get a little calculator, do the math of um, transferring your, your ounce to pounds, and then, so you can measure your fragrance oil. So, so far, it is zero. I don't know if you guys can see that. I doubt you can see it in, you know, don't worry. But it zeroed out to zero. I mean, it's zeroed out. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some wax to the container. It is completely melted, so I'm pouring it right now. My wax is about 180. Um, I can go a little bit higher because of the combination of waxes and the blend that I use. And I'm going to fill it up to as high as I think I want to um, to make it in the container. You don't want to fill it up all the way because you want to leave room to add that fragrance oil. 
Who I'm speaking very fast, you guys. Bear with me. This is my first time in a while doing a video, and I'm trying to get better with being consistent with this. So I fill my container up with the melted wax. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then now I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the scale. And it is... Oh, you guys, I messed up. Okay, so I forgot I used the scale earlier to do something else. So I'm going to estimate right now, and I'm going to zero out my scale. This is not going to... Okay. And this is going to be a little off. Don't worry about it going to be a little bit off but I'm not too worried about it because I've done it long enough to have an idea what I want to do with it and I usually have this set up before I started but I had so much going on today I was doing so many different things today um all right so let me zero this out there we go and let me take this little spoon out so this is not going to be a true um, amount for me but estimating usually when I fill it up like that it's about 56 ounces so I'm going to get my calculator and I'm going to measure out how much fragrance oil am I going to use for this particular ounce of wax so I'm going to go to Google has a great um, calculator. I can do ounce to pounds and I will be able to calculate better. So let's say I did about 56 ounces. So that's about 3.5 pounds. And then my formula that I usually will go in and do for the formula um, will give me an idea of how much fragrance oil to use. All right, so the formula um, that I got, I think I got this from Candle Science, is ounce of wax times percent of fragrance oil that you want to use. So let's say you want to use 10% fragrance oil or you want to use 8% fragrance oil. So you do ounce of wax times the amount of fragrance oil equals the ounce of fragrance oil needed. And I'll include that um, formula in the description as well. So we're going to say... We did 56 ounce. And we're gonna do the math. And I think I'm gonna, and I play around with mine. So I'm not exact, I don't go by the formula all the time, but I've gotten comfortable with trusting myself a little bit with it. So I'm gonna put in about, uh, I'll say about maybe four ounces to start with. Can't always trust it, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my scale on. This is my fragrance oil. I use a little glass. I prefer to use some folks, they use plastic, but I like glass. It's easier to clean and you know, I don't want the, the mixture of fragrance oils all the time. So I'm going to zero out my scale and I'm going to pour about four um, ounces of fragrance oil and I'll play loosely with it. If I accidentally pour more, that is also okay. All right. So fragrance oil is measured not based on the size of the container that you're using. It is based on the weight. So we're going to measure it out based on the weight, not the size of the container that I'm pouring the fragrance oil in. Once I pour that fragrance oil in, I also want to be conscious of the temperature of my wax because if the temperature of the wax is too high, you're mixing and you're mixing that fragrance oil in and the fragrance oil can also burn off so some of the fragrance can kill. But that usually is a high temperature if you're mixing it too soon. So if you're going to mix it about 185 degrees, 170 Eight, I don't go lower than 178, 180. So I'm going to test my temperature out 
and it's at a very good temperature and we're gonna go ahead and pour and mix it was um 175 so it's a little bit lower than I want to um, some people do it at 165 but I've found with me it doesn't work very well at that temperature you want to go ahead and stir for about one to two minutes so some say it's not necessary to stir your container for that two minute time frame but I'm the type of person as I say all the time you tell me to stir it for one minute I'm gonna stir it for longer at times so I just like to make sure because the goal is whatever I have in this mixture right here be it my multiple waxes that I use to create my my amount of um, wax that I use or the type of wax combination that I use along with the fragrance oil I want to make sure all of this is binding together so this is why you're keeping it you're making sure it's at the correct temperature you're making sure you're adding the fragrance oil at the same time and you're also making sure you're stirring it long enough the other thing you want to be conscious of is stirring it too hard and too widely you want to make it as smooth as possible because as you're stirring it you're creating bubbles so the faster you stir the more bubbles you get the bubbles are what creates the craters in the candles um, when they're melting or when they've hardened it also creates the little holes in the candles and it creates the, the top layer is not very smooth and additional bubbles within the wax when it sets also can affect how the final look of the candle is so with with soy it's a little bit harder to get that perfect candle because a lot of times you have frosting you'll have um, little craters sometimes when they burn so in some cases that's natural it just all depends on the type of wax you're using so I use a combination of um, coconut, palm, and I think it's 464 is my preferred method. And I do a blend of that. That doesn't work for everyone. This is my winter candle that I use. Um, and I, I'm sorry, my summer candle. I like to harden it up a little bit and the palm wax is good for hardening the candle. Now during the winter time, I don't have to use as much. So that's my preferred blend. Not everyone, you know, creates that combination. Some people just prefer 464 wax and you can get these from any um, candle store that sells these supplies and I'll include the links in the video for you to use if you're choosing to um, go that way now hearts and craft has beginner kits i started out with them as a matter of fact and they're the ones that pretty much gave me a kit to get started that you know that had that ability i don't think um some of the other companies i use have beginner kits can't remember but Amazon has some beginner kits on there as well that you can start with. Don't let it intimidate you. You know, everyone's like, why are you sharing information? I'm a person who believes that there is enough in the market to share. I don't have to monopolize on this area where I'm in. Um, I can share the information because there's always going to be a demographic that's going to like what you're making. And they may not like what I'm making. There's going to be a demographic that likes what I'm making. And they're not going to like what you're making. So you're never going to get into a position where you're never going to have customers. Somebody's going to buy from you. So it's not oversaturating the market. It, you just have to make sure your stuff is good. And they're going to like it. And they're going to buy it. And, you know, I, I pretty much my customers love what I do. And I've always been open to if they're, they're saying there's an issue or whatever because everything is not going to be perfect. You're going to have candles that don't burn correctly or the scent isn't strong enough because maybe the fragrance oil is light or maybe there are different things that add to how that fragrance burns wherever that customer is. So don't get disappointed if you get a customer complaint 
what I usually do when that happens, I go ahead and send them out a new one. And, um, you know, it's about customer satisfaction. And sometimes I'll have to refund because you have some people that they're just not happy. They just want to complain. They won't even give you the opportunity to make it right. And don't take it personal. Everyone has their different personalities. So I'm still stirring mine. I'm almost ready. I usually would like to pour about 175, but it's not going to work out with this one. <laughs> That's okay. So I have my, I think this is called like a pipe piping container pouring container something to that effect um i don't remember the name of it i've had it for so long i have two and what i'm going to do is start mixing and start pouring it get one of these you guys this makes less mess and it's so much easier to put it into the containers because of the blend of wax that i'm using and the percentage of each wax that i blend it together this right here does not require me to heat the jar ahead of time. Now, some wax will require, if you want it to adhere to the glass very well, you might need to go ahead and heat the glass. I have a little heat gun that I'll spray, that I'll hold on and heat it up, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm just going to go ahead and pour. I'm going to fill it up as much as I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and start filling my jars I'm probably going to need about two and a half container fulls to fill all of these jars and I, I guess I'll continue recording so you guys can see the whole process hopefully you've learned something today and I just got a, a mic so I'm testing that out as well you guys can be my guinea pigs I'm not opposed to that and then hopefully the quality of the video that I upload will be very good. If it's not that great, I'm still going to upload it because I'm not wasting all this work that I did. And then over time, I hope to improve. And then you guys can see the video better and see what I'm doing better. Let me know if I talk too much, though. I can be a talker sometimes. And then other times, I don't want to talk to nobody. <laughs> So just let me know and you can post your questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer the questions based on what I've learned, what I know over the years. And I've been doing this. I started this out during the pandemic and it has actually helped me in a lot of ways. This is what I do to relax. I come home from work. Because, you know, you got to keep that nine to five. You got to have multiple income. And that way you're not stressed about whether customers are purchasing your products or not. Because then that's an additional level of stress that you probably don't need. And I keep that nine to five and I come home from that nine to five and I go ahead and make candles. My son also helps. He works every day and he makes candles sometimes for me on a regular basis and i do other products as well i'll probably do a video of how to make like my body butters my wax melts other things like that so we're going to get ready to pour again and my other level i have some bubbles and so i just take the wick and just move it around a little bit um, to get rid of the bubbles so you guys don't worry too much though because in the end, once the wax solidifies, you can actually use a heat gun and smooth out the tops and help get rid of those little spaces within the wax that gives that funny look at the top of the wax so you can get a smooth top. So that's what I'm going to do because it's harder to record and work. <laughs> so everything is not precise right now. I'm going to go ahead and check the temperature of my wax. So let's do that now. And I'm heating it back up. All right, go ahead and hit the like, you guys. Hit the like of the video. Well, like the video. <laughs> I'm, I'm new to this YouTube thing. Every once in a while, I'll upload a video. 
but I'm trying to get more, um, I guess, out there with YouTube, Instagram, all of those. Go ahead and like my TikTok, my Instagram, Facebook page. We're all Phoenixology. Instagram is Phoenixology by BPHX. Facebook is Phoenixology. TikTok is, I think it's Phoenixology as well. And I'll put those in the description as well. Um, that way you can go ahead and like our page. And our website is Phoenixology.com. And you can purchase the candles that I'm making or anything I do in the video I usually put it on the website I create I create my own labels I pretty much do everything so it is sometimes a little delay of when I add things to the website if they're brand new if they're already existing on my website putting it you know I just um, update the amount that is available for sale all right here we go I'm gonna zero this out and we're going to go ahead and pour some wax. And I'm going to pour about the same amount. So I, I have an idea I'm going to use the same amount of wax. So these containers I'm going to move around Oops, excuse the nice noise. I think this mic picks up stuff very good. And then I'm going to move this to the back. And these that need to be filled, I'll move to the front. So these right here, I don't add the, the wick stick to, to hold it in place as, of, as yet. I wait till it cools just a little bit. And the reason why I don't, I've learned when the wick is too hot from the wax, sometimes they will pull up from the base of um, the wick holder. And then you have a candle that has a loose wick. So I wait till it cools a little bit. And then sometimes in the end, I still have to use a little, um, a little heat gun, but that's okay. I prefer that more than anything. So I have about 56, you guys. So it's about the same from the last time. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's about the same. I'll use the same amount as I did before. So let me go ahead and turn my scale back on. I got these scales from Amazon. So I have two scales. I have one for the fragrance oil. And I have one you, that I use for the um, wax container. All right. Doing the same thing. Got to pour it again. And I'm going to weigh it out. Mm. I might not have enough for the last batch, but we'll see. I might. I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to go ahead and pour in here. And I like to get every drop because, honey, when I tell you, fragrance oil is not cheap. This bottle alone, I think it was 20 something dollars for a 16 ounce bottle. And I bought this one from Candle Science. So that is the other thing be conscious of. Don't get disappointed. I, occasionally I have to slap myself and remind myself that even though a lot of these major companies can sell their candles for a lot cheaper and have more sales, it's because they buy in bulk. When you're able to buy in pallets and large amounts and gallons and all of that, you get a better price on your products. I'm not there yet. I'm not going to buy pallets of stuff when, number one, I don't even know if I'm going to sell that much in that amount of time. So I pretty much buy maybe two or three bottles of fragrance oil. Um, and I buy a variety of fragrance oil. So of course, when I calculate the cost of making my products to what I'm selling, I'm only making right now 
between five to seven dollars especially if i'm having a sale then it's less so if you guys are trying to get into making candles just be aware that your price range has to be based on how much money you're willing you know to um basically your profit margin and how much profit you want to make off of it so in the future my prices might change but at the moment I am pretty much going to stick where it is for now and occasionally I'll run a sale but when I'm running a sale I'm losing money but customers love the sale so sometimes you are going to bring in a little bit less profit at times just um, to make your customers happy this is why I keep my nine to five <laughs> but eventually I will get to the point where I can buy in bulk and then I will make more of a profit so this is what happens starting out this is going to be the case and when people complain about your prices I've seen candles for $800 $700 and they don't burn very well and they're not very strong so let your price be your price just Stay encouraged, don't get disappointed because I have moments where I'm disappointed as well and I wonder if I'm doing it, you know, doing the right thing and if this is for me. So we're stirring and stirring it up, stirring it up. And I'm hoping that what's left over is pretty much going to be enough to fill those last few containers. If not, then it's not gonna, you know, fill up and I'm okay with that. All right, you guys, my hands are getting tired. I usually have a taller spoon than this, but. Um, I'm hoping this video can, comes out very good. Because it would be such a shame to do all this talking and all this work and my video is not good quality. But y'all going to get this video regardless if the quality is that great or not. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> mm. All right. Okay, you guys, I'm getting ready to pour this. This is going to be a little messy unfortunately it is i've accepted it this one is going to be a little messy because i kind of filled it up a little bit much so i don't know if i told you guys you don't want to create a candle today and sell it tomorrow, okay? Because if that customer gets it tomorrow or within two days and they burn it, that's not going to give us the strongest fragrance. With soy, you want to at least give it 14 days to really get a good hot throw. And, the, and also a good cold throw. A cold throw is when the candle is not lit and you still smell it. The hot throw is the smell you get when the candle is lit. So you really care more about the hot throw than anything because once it's lit, you wanna make sure that they smell the candle. And keep in mind the container, the size of con container will determine the area of room and how big the room is that you can, you know, they'll smell, smell it in the candle. So all of that combined with the size of wick that you use, the type of wax you use, how much fragrance oil you use, are you doing everything at the right temperature for everything to bind together so when it burns, it gives off the right scent. So I never thought that I would need so much math and science to start a candle business, but this is constant math and science, all about formulas and all about testing. All right, so I think I started enough. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's pour. 
Oops, I poured it a little bit too fast and we get some bubbles, but we'll work it out. So let's go ahead and do this one first. Oops. So the other thing that happens is you have to be very careful with these pouring containers because sometimes yep there we go that little stopper can come out and then you're sitting there trying to pour wax and the stopper is not out and then sometimes the stopper comes out and you have wax pouring all over the place this has happened to me multiple times all right so I'm not going to do any more. How long has this video been? It's 30 minutes. This is a little bit too long. I didn't want to be this long. But you guys, as I mentioned, go ahead and like the video. I'm going to add some links. Um, there are going to be some links in the descriptions. And on top of that, you want to go ahead and do some more research. Anything that I know I'm willing to share. Um, See you in the next video.